federal government has announced an increase in the price of natural gas for power generation companies. The new domestic price uh, is now $2.42 per metric million British terminal units. That's up from the previous rate of $2.18. Uh, the price of commercial gas has also increased uh, from $2.05 uh, per metric million British terminal unit to $2.92. Now the British midstream, the Nigerian rather midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority says the Petroleum Industry Act of 2021 provides a regulatory framework for the determination of a market-based pricing regime for the domestic gas market. Well, Nigeria generates over 70% of its electricity from thermal power plants that are fired by gas. Could this development lead to a hike in electricity tariffs paid by consumers? Let's bring in RISE analyst uh, Dr. Sam Amadi, who's also a former chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Well, uh, Dr. Amadi, we're back to a familiar, you know, plane this time. And uh, the whole talk about this increment is not around the disco yet. It's just on the uh, Genkos. So how does this, first of all, you explain this and let us in on how this will now translate into some kind of pinch on the end users. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I, I think it's very clear. What's going to happen is the tariffs that we pay as customers are built up from gas supply. It's a value chain tariff. So it builds up from gas supply, if you're using thermal generator, to transmission costs, and to distribution, and that's what we pay. So uh, usually, uh, gas could be up to 40% of the cost component. Uh, and so when the cost of gas is um, increases, um, the, the regulator has under minor and major reviews, uh, processes looking at increment in gas, increment in, um, uh, increment in uh, quantity, uh, inflation, which is also going up, and all these, they are more than plus minus 5%. They will trigger re-indexing. It means that the price on which the previous price or the current price based on these fundamentals are no longer valid as proposed by the regulator. So um, the impact of this is clear. That you're going to see uh, changes because these are pass-through costs. What that means is that everything about gas is passed through to the value chain back to the customer. Uh, it's a major component of the cost profile. Uh, and so if uh, the regulator of gas says uh, they have increased the, the price of gas and, of course, the transport cost of gas, it's going to be passed through automatically to consumers. Now, the regulator might do two, two things. Either allow a complete pass-through during the minor review or decide to pass it through in bits. Uh, if we discuss with the discos and based on which show, how much this will change the price. Uh, and going by the economic crisis in the country today, inflation, energy spike in energy costs, fuel, diesel, everything. Uh, consumers are exposed to a lot. So the regulator might spread, spread this uh, difference across multi-year. And that's the idea of having a multi-year tariff, in which case it might have a period of what you call deferred payment. So they know that um, the discos and the jenkos are the cost of gas is more than they have allowed in the tariff, but they do a deferred accounting. Say, look, we're not going to pass it through, but we know that we are owing you this bucket. There's this two million, two billion, that is the difference between the allowable gas cost and the new gas cost. So they put in the bucket and and put it up and say, look, this will come in other years. But this happens where there is some degree of tolerance, meaning the the the, 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 the sector is not as bankrupt as it is today. Uh, many of the discos, the utilities are financially weak, that they can't uh, have deferred payment. They know that, look, we have a two billion, one, one, one billion naira that is not paid to us, but it's going to be recovered through in the next four or five years through very slight in increment in power when it is improved. So what, 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 what we're going to see if this price kicks off is that the directors will put pressure on the on the uh, bulk trader, uh, the bulk trader who is the one that guarantees power, backstops the payment 
to directors. We'll also want to pay them. And then everything passes back to the uh, discos who are going, going to collect this money from the customers. And we might see a increase in tariff. Uh, many people think that perhaps increase in tariff, if it is modest, if it is graduated, and if, it's, if it triggers better hour of service, may not be a bad thing. I mean, for example, in the last two weeks, or the last two months, I've been paying a lot to diesel. And I ask myself, if we increase this tariff and I have a guarantee of let's say 12, 14 hours of power supply, I will be financially in a better position. And so ultimately, the, 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 the problem is that it's not well communicated to the people, uh, the optics is bad, uh, the improvement in service is not, we don't see it. And so people get the impression that all increases are bad. If you look at, if you do a two table, look at right. what you pay for self-provision, gas, diesel, and look at, if you have steady proposal, Dr. Abadi, if I can jump in here. Maybe at some point, the yeah. increment will not be too bad. Yeah. Now, you mentioned bankruptcy earlier. Now, why won't the Jenkos be bankrupt when the government alone, the federal government is owing some $2 billion to the Jenkos alone? And the federal government is expected to pay some one point. Mm -hmm. Uh, seven uh, trillion naira subsidy this year, 2024. How will this increase affect things, both on the debt front and, of course, this uh, mm -hmm. subsidy that government is supposed to pay? They will all increase. I mean, look, if you the, the problem of the problem of tariff increase is that once you increase tariff, then it means that the the quantity of losses. Collection losses arising from non-payment will also increase. So invariably, if government has not been paying up to 30% of their of their bill, for example, and the tariff goes up by extra 20%, it means that government is now probably going to be owing 50%. So we're going to see ballooning of debt, except government now pays up, except there's an increase in government financing for parastatals and utilities, and they pay. So that's a problem. A, a tariff increase without change management strategy, without improving lowering collection losses, might actually aggravate the debt profile. That's why good disco uh, CEOs, those who want to this market, they don't like tariff increase. People think that, oh, they like it. No. If the tariff increases more than it ought to increase, it creates, uh, it increases the debt profile. It increases the disposition to to, to 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 not to pay it it helps it increases also uh tampering and energy theft especially in our jurisdiction where there's no law good law enforcement so a a, a very high rate of increase is not good for a fledging electricity market where you are trying to incent good behavior customer control payment of uh, of tariff and so and worst case if this increase goes with no improvement in service delivery, if it can, if increase and we're still having this uh, less than two hours, some places four hours of daily supply, that is dangerous because what that means is that it increases the tendency of consumers to game the system, increases the tendency to steal power, to connive with uh, disgruntled and corrupt uh, NEP officials or uh, 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 e e EDC or whichever uh, distribution network, the officials to further damage the commerciality of well, the service. Uh, uh, I think we should be very restrict in tariff increase. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Amadi, let me see if I can throw this in before we let you go. And uh, how best can uh, the country help the end users, knowing for all that we have an abundance of gas, and one would have thought, even though it is priced in the international market and the dollar, given what we've gone through as a country, isn't there a way that uh, this same subsidy that the discos are even enjoying mm -hmm. can actually be, you know, taken and stretched into the consumers? I think there are two misconceptions. You know, Nigeria, typical of Nigeria, we say we are a gas country. Yes, we are a gas country, potentially, but you may be surprised that there's no gas available. Three things. Ah. One, we have <laughs> crisis with volume. Two, we have a problem with investment. We've not been invested in the gas uh, production process. And thirdly, infrastructure. So yes, we have gas. We have gas. Anambra is gas. Imo is like the headquarter of gas. But in real sense, we don't have gas as we think we have gas. That's the 
proper that's a shortage of, shortage of gas. They won't tell the truth. The truth is that we have a shortage of gas that's acute that may cripple generation in the days to come. That's the fact. I'm surprised because it's a tragedy. We have gas, but we don't have gas. We don't have gas because we're not making investment in molecule development. We are also not uh, making investment in the infrastructure. The other issue that's important is the issue of the consumer side of it. See, the problem is that you can't solve this problem except you're able to provide good leadership. Now, the regulator has to look at the process for tariff increase that we set up. There should be consult consultation between every disco and their customer. And what that means is that you're going to level up with them, show them the cost profile, show them what improvement to have, show them why this new additional, uh, this additional tariff increase is necessary, and then commit to a very measurable improvement. It's if you don't do that, now they are just flying a kite, but they're not really settling down to customer governance. The whole idea of customer service is that you create a trust between the customer and this utility provider. And that's why in 2014, we made a tariff regulation law that takes neck away and presents the consumers and their provider in a process of interrogating the financials, the economic side of it, and even the service delivery. So look, we need the tariffs to be cost-reflective, but they can't be cost-reflective without a real service obligation and service relationship between utilities and their customers. That's right. the minimum, that's the minimum that we need to drive this sector, and we're not doing that right now. Well, Dr. Sam Amadi, thank you so much. Well, the regulator and MDPR is uh, Farouk Ahmed says uh, stakeholders were consulted and it's based on the Petroleum Industry Act that they have made this move. We have to say thank you very much for joining us.